Hi there. Till now we have been speaking about the different negative effects of microorganisms in the food industry. So we have looked at how microorganisms cause spoilage, how microorganisms can cause foodborne infections and intoxications and generally how microorganisms act as contaminants in food. But that's not their only effect. They do have a positive role as well. So in this video we'll see how microorganisms are positively impacting food and beverage operations how we use microorganisms to create a variety of foods in fact there are more than 3500 traditional fermented foods around the globe when we say fermented foods these are basically vegetables or fruits or meat or dairy products which have been acted upon by microorganisms to give a unique flavor and a unique taste a unique appearance so that is what we call as a fermented food and there are so many different types of fermented foods around the world not just alcoholic drinks even cocoa beans or coffee grains or even tea leaves such beverages have also been prepared by using fermentation so that they acquire distinct flavors so we'll have a quick look of the different fermented foods which are produced using the microorganisms and certain other microorganisms which are eaten directly as food so the organisms which are involved in preparation of these fermented foods or which are you know helping us in the food industry are mainly the bacteria the molds and the yeast these are the three groups of organisms so bacteria like streptococcus or lactobacillus the lactic acid bacteria which we keep hearing often or in fact even the yeasts which are so often used in the production of uh, wine in the production of alcoholic drinks in the production of the bread in the baking industry even molds are often used in the pre preparation of cheese or we will see how mushrooms are an example of molds that we eat as food Now the first industry we look at is the baking industry which uses a lot of yeast. So baking industry is the industry that is involved in production of bread and other similar products and this industry thrives on the action of yeast. What yeast does is it converts or it breaks down the carbohydrates that are present in the flour into ethanol that is alcohol and carbon dioxide now in case of baking industry we don't have much use for the ethanol part of it so we use strains or species like saccharomyces cerevisiae which produce more of carbon dioxide so that that gives us these kind of you know pores or that gives us the light and airy texture in the bread on the other hand in case of the uh, alcoholic beverages or in the brewing industry we need yeast species which produce more of ethanol and less of carbon dioxide so we do have species like saccharomyces carlsbergensis which is used in the production of beer so either way it is yeast which is being used in the baking and the brewing industry only the strains vary based on what is the end product that we want so whether it is beer or whiskey wine all of these use yeast the only thing that differs is their production process and the initial starter substrate that we use for preparation of these alcoholic beverages when we see the next product that is cheese this is produced by the action of bacteria as well as molds so we have something called as the blue cheese or the roquefort cheese is an example of that blue cheese is it is named so or it is termed so because you can see there are veins of blue color that is being formed in the cheese this is due to the action of molds which are present what these molds what what these uh, fungi do is they convert the milk into this coagulated product which we call as the cheese the molds give their unique flavor and this kind of blue appearance that's why it is called as blue cheese we also have other cheeses which are produced by bacteria for example the cheddar cheese or the swiss cheese these are produced by action of the lactic acid bacteria so we have bacteria which are doing the same work they are coagulating the uh, milk to form the cheese the action is the same but because the organisms used are different they have been termed differently even their texture and appearance is different as you can see over here the next product we have which we all might have you know often consumed is yogurt yogurt is a specialized fermented product that is produced by the action of two different strains of bacteria that is streptococcus thermophilus and lactobacillus bulgaricus what these bacteria do is their coordinated action gives us this unique flavor in the yogurt again what they are doing is they are growing in the milk 
and then fermenting it to form the yogurt the distinct flavor of yogurt the next we have are fermented pickles fermented pickles are basically vegetables which are pickled so that they can be kept for a longer period of time usually in pickles we add the vinegar or we add some kind of preservatives but here in what we are doing in fermented pickles is we are introducing microorganisms which or these fermentative bacteria which produce the acids that are necessary for preservation that's why they are considered as fermented pickles so these vegetables like gherkins they can be preserved for a longer period of time due to the acids produced by the fermentative bacteria so this is an example fermented pickles is an example of a bacterial fermented food we have sausages and sauces like soy sauce as well sausages are also produced by the action of fermentative bacteria so we have sausages like salami or chorizo which, which are examples of fermented or cured sausages what we do over here is that we again introduce for the fermentative bacteria which act upon the meat to give rise to that unique and distinct flavor soy sauce is an example of a uh, a sauce which is produced by the action of mold the example here is aspergillus species so what happens is the soy sauce is produced by cooking the soybeans and then mixing it with roasted wheat introducing the fungus that is the mold which produces that kind of distinct flavor and uh, the aroma that is there in the soy sauce so this is an example of a mold fermented food we also have many many different types of indian fermented foods for example curd that we all consume in our homes or butter cultured buttermilk is again something which is a, a type of uh, specialty fermented food we have idli which is produced by the process of fermentation again by the action of bacteria and yeasts we have dhokla bhatura all of these are produced by the action of bacteria or yeasts on the flour or the dairy products on the rice on the cereals that is how these products are being produced we also have something called as gundruk which is a nepal nepali specialty which is again produced by the action of bacteria so these are some examples of fermented foods which are found in india there are many many more fermented products i have just listed a few over here something a few which you might be hearing often for example we have kefir which is again produced a fermented dairy product it's a it's produced from milk or we have sauerkraut sauerkraut is fermented cabbage kombucha which is fermented tea liquor so tea is fermented over here we have vinegar which is again produced by the action of acetic acid bacteria so all of these are examples of fermented products which are produced from various starter cultures either it could be tea or like in case of kefir it, it is you know produced by the lactic acid bacteria and yeast which are acting on milk so different kinds of organisms are involved in production of these fermented products we also have certain microorganisms which we eat as such so we don't it, it is not an example of a fermented food but then it is microorganism being used in food so the best example of this are the mushrooms mushrooms are basically fungi or molds that are big in size that are macroscopic so we can pluck them and eat them there are a variety of mushrooms and all the mushroom varieties are belonging to the mold category so this is an example of a fungus or a mold or a microorganism which we directly consume as food these were some examples of the fermented foods and generally the role of microorganisms in the food and beverage industry i hope this video was useful to all of you see you all in the next one as well bye